dinks trying to make ends meet. So we have the Yahoo News, which Yahoo News is a mockingbird asset. It's a state-run media publication. So we have to know that first off. But dinks are double income, no kids. Uh, is what it stands for. And it's been making hay lately. It's been a social media craze. People saying how great their life is. Wow. You can see right through their eyes that they hate their lives and they can't stand things, which I'm mind reading, but kind of obvious, kind of easy to tell. Uh, just using your own hum human intuition when you're looking and peering into these people's souls. Um, so people can say whatever they want, but that's what I see. So you can make your own decision. We have people here <laughs> that they both make it. They both live in the greater Seattle area in the tech industry, and they both have under over $100,000 a year in income. And they struggling to make ends meet because they are gallivanting around, socializing, a 25- and 30-year-old married. And the, the article is quite comical, to be totally honest. And they're not saving anything, not doing anything at all to promote a uh, lifestyle in the future, uh, thinking forward, savings, etc. And not only that, most people are struggling because even if they do save something, they're saving in dollars. They save in fiat, and that's a liability. Fiat is a liability. It is owed to someone. Someone the other day asked me, and they said, well, I, yeah, there are dollars. How can you say they're a liability, Brandon? I, it's, it's savings. It's things I can spend on in the future. You owe that to somebody. That is, Every dollar in existence has interest owed on it. That is something that most people have no comprehension. I mean, we're talking one in a million know that. So one in a million know this. The dollar is debt. It is owed back to the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve note. Look at the dollar, look at the note, and look what it says on the bottom. It used to be that you could redeem it in gold, actual money. Now it's a Federal Reserve note. It's an IOU. You owe the Federal Reserve back that dollar with interest, and it's called the national debt. Every citizen right now own, owes about 100000 in debt, and I think it's every taxpayer owes about $250,000 in debt attached to your Social Security number. <laughs> you see where this is going. Do you see how this is working? Do you see how the system is working against you? This is the uniparty. This is why politics is just complete uh, just debauchery because it has, it's not red versus blue. It's the state versus you. It's the uniparty. It's all them versus all the rest of us. Until we understand that, the, the, the currency, the dollar, the what people call money, which it's not, it's not a store of value. Money has to be a store of value. The currency they use is the conveyor belt, the mechanism, the transition transmission system they use, the people at the top, the unproductive class, the banking class, political class, use to perpetuate this theft, this system, this inflationary world we live in, stealing your time and energy away from you where you don't know what's happening. People like this, there are young people that can't get ahead. I also have another article talking about the wealth gap and how millennials right now own about, according to Statista, the website, 9% of the nation's wealth. And at the same time, 30 years ago, the boomers oh, oh, had over 20% of the nation's wealth. It was 20 to 23% or somewhere in the nation's wealth. Now, the millennials, 30 years later, only own 9% of the nation's wealth. So can we see the massive problems that that's going to create? Can we see also the wealth shift that's going to happen from the older generations down to the younger generations? So in the form of lower asset prices because people are going to be selling stuff and be very deflationary, people passing things down. That's, again, another little side note on all this. However, we need to start understanding the process of what's going on here. Band-aids on bullet holes are what our society is obsessed with. And it, nothing drives me crazier. The thing, the one thing, someone had to say, Brandon, what drives you more than anything? Why do you work with Bitcoin trading cards? And, and why do you create what you create there? And the content you create here and, and the, the books you're writing and, and the blogs and the, the, you know, the, the cars, going on podcasts, having people on our podcast. Why are you constantly worried about these, this you know, money and education and financial literacy? Because it runs every part of our life. And it... When you destroy the money and you make it a currency, you break the feedback loop of society, which is what money is. It's a feedback loop to society to convey information, the free market conveying information to each other. And not only that, it's a store of energy. It's, a, it's an economic container for your time and energy. When people can't store their economic time and energy into something, and it's siphoned away through inflation, through the printing process, through the digit, digits in a computer being typed away, fractional reserve lending from the banking industry, loaning things out, loaning things out. Every dollar itself, again, is a loan. 
it is an IOU. You owe it back with interest. Once we understand that we're in a debt-based system and there's no way out, then you can start building for the future. Once you kind of go through those stages of grief and realizing, you know, the, the, the denial and the, the anger, all these things, you can go through that and, and understand that, which is what I went through 15 years ago. Then things can become clear and we can work on solutions and we can really work toward the future, actually, because that's the hope in all this. There is hope. There is a system being built right now based in equity, fairness, justice, inclusion, all being built right now, being built this, the moment we are speaking, every 10 minutes, TikTok, next block, being built right now. And all it takes is people to wake up and it will happen. Enough people will wake up and the iceberg will flip gradually, then suddenly. So people like this. 25 and 30 year old living in the tech world, thinking they have it made and realizing they can't spend anything anymore because they have no idea, no financial industry, no nothing. Go, the last video we did as well, go check that out about what people wish they could have learned in school. So the very, the, the very, you know, the, um, the last video we did yesterday, go check that out about the 10 things people wish they would have learned in school and the 10 things that they could have done without within school. And again, those 10 things, you're going to see what's going on and how it, it completely dovetails right into this video today and how the system is so backward and it's designed to perpetuate problems and instigate problems that the government, that your daddy, that, that big brother can come in and try to fix and take your sovereignty away from you so that they can come fix, take your time and energy, your wealth away from you so that they can come fix the problem. They can be the arson and the firefighter and you don't have control of your life anymore. That's how far we fall. Most people don't even don't even understand what we're talking about. They don't even, it doesn't even register on their radar anymore. Most people, again, so hopelessly inured in the system, like the matrix says, that they question why it even matters, Brandon. Why, who cares? Why does it even matter? Let me be a little cog in the system. Let me be a little peon. People have been so beaten down mentally and emotionally and spiritually, they don't even have fight left in them. It's up to the 3%. It's up to the 3% of people that have it inside of them, that have the call, the fire, the, the flame that is lit, that will never go away. It is up to those 3% of individuals to be the galvanizing force, to coalesce and to come together to fight for freedom and liberty and prosperity and property rights for the other 8 billion people. That's how life works. That's how life's always worked. And that's how life will continue to work. So this is a clarion call for anyone who this message resonates with them, that now is the time to stand it's time to disinfect the darkness with light, and it's time to march forward with truth and education. Please share this out. Question everything with boldness, even the existence of God himself. Trust what I am saying, but verify it. Please share it out. The algorithm truly hates truth, and we need to minimize collateral damage. This is not financial advice. It is freedom advice. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.